Hello everyone, welcome back to our learning series of how to use Unreal Engine for architectural visualization. In this video, we'll go in details on how to create a material inside Unreal Engine from scratch. There are many ways to get a ready-used material inside Unreal Engine, such as using the Substance Designer uh, plugin inside Unreal Engine, and just download the material and apply it to your model or to your objects. There are lots of free materials available in uh, the Substance Designer plugin inside Unreal Engine. There are also uh, the Megascan library where you can also download lots of free uh, materials uh, using the Megascan uh, bridge. Also from the Unreal Engine marketplace. You can also import your materials that you have created inside 3D Max using Datasmith export uh, plugin. But the idea here is that we actually need to learn how to create the material from scratch so to overcome any problems that could happen during our uh, material uh, uh, process while we're working on our model. So to start, I've created a folder with the material uh, name on it. I'm just gonna create a right click and choose material. Let's create a simple gold uh, color material. And double click it. As you can see, this is the material window panel. It's composed of a few of the tools buttons on the uh, top uh, row of our uh, material panel. That represents save, browse, and clean up uh, and some of the stuff that you're gonna see us use it uh, during our uh, learning process. Over on the left side, you'll find a spherical that shows the process or the progress of your material creation. The details panel that shows the options where you're gonna adjust your material also options. And the middle and this graph, we can see the material nod, node that uh, gonna be showing how we gonna connect our uh, material nodes to create uh, the specific material that we uh, have uh, chosen. On the right side, there's a lots of uh, nodes here, but some of them we gonna actually create them using some of the shortcuts as we gonna learn. So to start with the gold color material creation, we're gonna right click and choose a constant free vector. This is represent an RGB color creation where you can connect it directly to the base color and get the gold color as we're gonna create it now. Simply like that. To get this as a shortcut, just press on three left click on your mouse then connect it again and choose the yellow color so this is by using a shortcut number three so hit apply and we're gonna minimize this let's apply this material to this table over here so I'm just gonna drag it apply it over there so this is just to create a simple color of the material we still need some of the reflection and glossiness over this table to apply the gold color uh, characteristics. We're gonna need to add a constant where it represents a number that will be connected to the metal. So zero represents there is no metal uh, attributes inside the material and one represents a full material uh, characteristic for the material. I'm gonna hit apply and gonna see we're gonna see the result immediately after we apply the material. Still we don't see some of the reflection. I'm gonna copy just by clicking Control C, Control V or even by pressing on number one and left click by the mouse and connect this to the roughness. So zero represent there is no roughness at all and one represent maximum of the roughness. So I'm gonna go in the middle around 0.3 and 
and hit apply and go again to the material so maybe a little bit less of the reference uh, of the roughness but the, the problem is as you can see every time I hit apply I have to go back and open the material to overcome this problem we can do uh, something better which is called creating an instance of this material so I'm gonna right click create a material instance and double click it as you can see I don't see any of the parameters that I have created in the material that's because it still doesn't represent a parameter so the material instance will, will represent it on the, on the panel so I'm gonna right click on the color convert this to a parameter and call this gold color and for the metal right click convert this to a parameter call this metallic for the roughness I can actually create this from scratch instead of converting this again by creating something called scalar parameter and this is actually gonna create for me the same thing that we have uh, converted for the metallic the shortcut for this one is pressing S left click on the mouse button I'm gonna call this the roughness I'm gonna give it a value of 0.3 and as you can see there is a slider of max and minimum if I choose this for example the maximum will be 2 and hit apply connect this sorry first uh, hit apply and close this and open the material instance as you can see now I can I have our parameters that are available in our material and for the roughness the maximum value for this is number two as we have chosen over there so I'm gonna apply the material instance for the table and while you can see, while we changing the parameter Z as you can see we have our material changed in the real time inside uh, the viewport can also change the color so this is the basic step of creating uh, a material in a material instance for our uh, material creation lesson so let's start by creating a glass material for our uh, window panel so right click head material let's name this as the glass double click it we're gonna now create uh, a color three vector to make this the base color and convert it to a parameter let's name this as class color and we're gonna bring a little bit to the bluish effect all right for the glass material we basically need to have the metal on the specter of the white color so I'm gonna press 3 and convert this to a parameter metal and specular and connect these to the two parameters and choose a white color all right so now now we need to add a, para a node to the roughness and uh, start to see some kind of an effect of the glass um, I'm gonna add a scalar parameter but this time we're gonna add two scalar parameters one is the roughness front and the other one I'm gonna copy this control V roughness side same thing I'm gonna copy paste for the opacity which is not active currently to activate the opacity we're gonna choose the material knob and determine that this is a blend mode as a translucent and go down to the translucency and change it to a surface translucency volume basically it enables the light to go through the material all right so we're gonna connect these two knots through something called a lerp now lerp means it represents the front and the side of the material so here we're gonna 
make the front the roughness basically like 0.1 and for the side maybe 0.1 and to start to see the effect we're gonna add a node called Fresnel Fresnel function and we're gonna add a scalar parameter to this Fresnel power And connect this to the alpha channel of the LERP node and connect this to the roughness. The same thing, I'm gonna copy this here to the opacity after naming this, changing the name to opacity because if you don't change the name, it will, if you adjust this node, it will adjust the other one also because it has the name opacity. Opacity side. Alright, connecting this same way as we have done for the roughness. And let's start to see how our material is going to look like on the sphere. Alright. So as you can see now we're gonna we starting to look uh, to have uh, the opacity look of the glass. If you change now the Fresnel uh, power, let's say if I change the opacity to 0.1 and the side 0.5, let's see how this is going to affect Fresnel. Just waiting for it to show the effect. So. Maybe it's taken a little bit of time on the material parent. So I'm gonna apply this and create a material instance. So we can see the effect on the material instance. So we're gonna right click this, create a material instance, a glass instance. And start applying this on the glass panel. Okay. Give it like just like a minute or something to compile. Double click our material instance of the glass. Enable all of these nodes. Okay, so we're starting to look the glass effect, but we're gonna start adding some changes here. So if you look at the Fresnel effect. As you can see, if we have the opacity uh, like for one, as you can see, there is no opacity at all if you're looking front in front of the glass. So if you put this to 0.05, we're starting to have an opacity effect which represents the glass. Let's put the side also a little bit to 0.1. So if you minimize this, it will spread the effect of the opacity and mix it between the front and the side and currently we need to build our light so we can see the light go through the glass inside the building before we build our light I would like to increase the directional light to a higher value so we can enable enable the, the light bounce to go more inside the building so we can have the area inside the building uh, light it up uh, as much as possible so we're gonna increase this to 80 and for the HDRI backdrop let's increase it also by 3 and we're gonna hit build and I'm gonna come back when it's finished okay so the light build has finished but as you can see the light intensity have increased and the reason we have increased the directional light uh, intensity is to get enough light bounces inside uh, the building so we can uh, see the walls uh, through the glass to overcome this problem we're gonna use 
uh, a volume called uh, post process and the post process basically represent the post production that uh, we actually do uh, inside uh, Photoshop so if you look at its uh, main uh, parameters you'll find that most of them is included inside uh, your post production process uh, once you have the render finished and move your uh, images to Photoshop to enable the post process on top of uh, the whole area for our project we can either expand the limit as we have done uh, for the light importance volume or we gonna search for something called infinite uh, extend and we gonna hit this so it's gonna affect the whole uh, level so to decrease this light intensity I'm gonna go to the exposure value and bring it for minus 1.5 now this is better but the shadows looks a little bit darker so we're gonna increase the brightness of the shadows we go down here and we'll find the shadows the gamma let's put it 1.2 i think this is enough we can also increase the gamma a little bit here for the global illumination 1.2 so we can have enough uh, brightness and i believe this is a little bit acceptable in terms of the brightness we can decrease it a little bit 1.1 okay so back to the glass material so as you can see you have a reflection happening uh, for the glass reflecting the HDRI but it's not actually reflecting what's in front of the glass like the chairs over here to solve this issue you can use uh, a visual effects like the sphere or the box reflection but they still gonna they're not gonna give you the perfect reflection of these chairs in front of the glass so I recommend to use a planner reflection that cost you a little bit of performance wise but will give you the solution to this problem so I'm gonna rotate it 90 degree and push it until it fit within the glass and to activate it uh, without seeing this effect I'm gonna just hit G and now as you can see we have our uh, reflection reflecting these chairs uh, in front of the glass okay so we're gonna keep adjusting the glass material after we have added the opacity on the roughness I'm gonna add also uh, a refraction node which represent uh, one of the most important uh, element of the glass material so let's copy these control C control V name these as refraction and refraction side and connect the frenal effect to the alpha and connect this to the refraction and hit apply and then we can open uh, the material instance to enable this uh, extra uh, parameters that we have added so just uh, okay as you can see it's still uh, compiling I'm gonna enable the refraction and the refraction side. Okay, so the refraction represent. Uh, I have an image here, I think, that will explain this. As part of the physical effect of the refraction uh, is that when the light goes inside the glass the refraction effect will uh, redirect the, gla the, the light direction and will, you'll have a, a funny uh, extent of the glass look sorry 
of the glass look through the glass. So let's go back to the glass panel and adjust this reflection front and side. And as you can see, this is what happened when we play with the reflection. So I'm gonna put the front to 0.7 and the reflection side for 1.08. Okay. We can still play with the Fresnel effect. I believe this is okay for now. Yeah. Okay. So now that we have our glass material uh, having everything aside with the parameters and everything, I'm gonna hit one more time for the build and see the final effect of the glass. I'm just gonna make sure we add same material over here and from inside also. And I choose unlet because I have actually the attached the back face of the glass to show you an extra effect on the glass material in a few minutes. So now all the the glass panel have the same effect. So let's help build again and see the result and come back once it's finished. Okay, so the light build the process has finished. And now we have our glass uh, compiled with a refraction and resection on top of it. And we can see a little bit of uh, a reflection over here. And I believe we have our glass material uh, shows in a, a very good way. But what if we want to go a little bit more by creating, for example, a little bit of details on top of this glass panel. Let's say, for example, some dirt or some scratches on top of the glass. And that's why I actually uh, deattached the glass panel, as I mentioned earlier. I have separated the front from the back because I want to uh, create another glass material, the same one, but just add uh, a few extra effects that will show this uh, scratches um, layers on top of it but we don't want to have it actually on the back of the glass so to do that you're just gonna go back to your uh, 3d max model and uh, deattach the glass uh, uh, object the polygon object or even you can uh, rename a material ID different for uh, the front uh, face and then Export it again as a, a the data smith uh, same file name that you have done earlier, and you only what you're gonna need to do is just head to the uh, the imported data smith file, right click it, and choose re-import, and it will update your file. You don't need to uh, activate the import material option, so we will not lose the glass material that you have uh, assigned on the glass panel. All right, so to add this um, extra um, details, I'm gonna copy or duplicate the glass material by hitting Control and W. Name this glass two or glass, yeah, glass two with details. Space over there, I have to add an underscore. Okay, double click it. I'm gonna add a little bit of the textures here that I have imported and they represent basically uh, an alpha channel or a, um, a gray color uh, with a, a white channel for the scratches as you can see and also another texture as a normal uh, texture for the same uh, texture for the alpha channel. If you are wondering how to create a normal uh, texture inside uh, for the Unreal Engine, sorry, um, the easiest way to do this is that you can download the NVIDIA Texture Tool Exporter. 
and all what you're gonna need to do just activate the Nvidia uh, texture tool open your texture let's say for example this one and you're just gonna choose an image type as a normal and then save it as uh, if you look here it has converted the texture and a fraction of a second to a normal save as and choose your extension let's say for example jpeg and then import it inside unreal engine i'll put the link in the description uh, below for you so to put the textures inside the material the easy way just to drag them inside the texture we're gonna start arranging our uh, workspace here so this is the normal that we're gonna connect it to the normal uh, node here so the color and the metal let's spread these a little bit to the back put this a little bit above here fraction and the opacity one of the good uh, uh, characteristic of the material inside Unreal Engine is that you can group a bunch of nodes like that and hit C to create a comment so we're gonna create this for example as this is the roughness and you can also change the color so you, in case you have multiple uh, comments uh, panel for your material and if you want to move them you're just gonna move the comment panel and it will move with it all right so we want to add this texture detail to our uh, glass material i'm going to create a node now called uh what is it? aligned texture extend this a little bit push this here sorry and i want to connect the texture sample to the texture object but as you can see it doesn't actually connect so I have to right click convert to a texture object and connect to the texture object and I'm gonna add a scalar parameter by pressing CS and uh, left click mouse button and we're gonna name this as the map size sorry connect this to the texture size and now we're going to use another uh, node parameter called a multiplier by pressing M and left click. And this is basically going to connect, multiply both the layer uh, texture that we're going to add to the glass and also the roughness effect for the front and side or the frontal effect. So I'm going to connect it through the X, Y, and Z and connect this to the roughness okay we're gonna create the same thing here for the normal so I'm gonna right click and world it aligned texture convert this to a texture object connect it create a scalar parameter name it as normal size map connect this size we gonna connect this to the normal but uh, to get the normal effect on the material we're gonna need to add this to a flatten normal and also add a scalar parameter normal intensity so we can actually uh, increase the normal intensity um, if this is the first time you hear about the normal the normal represent basically the same bump effect that we used to add inside 3d max as it represents the details for uh, our material so i'm gonna add also a comment for this one name it as the normal and change the color maybe to yellow and hit apply and we're gonna create also uh, a material instance for this one sorry okay material instance 
and apply this on the front panel because the back panel will have the, the clean glass effect without the, the texture effect of the scratches so let's hit go to over here to the glass and activate all of the parameters again and put it aside here let's maximize this so we can see what we're doing so I'm gonna put the from 0.05 and this is the map size of the texture I'm gonna put it for 150 start to see it and maybe 0.1 for the normal density the normal size map should be the same as the map size of that roughness texture map yes so we're starting to see the effect of the normal intensity let's see if we can minimize this a little bit and a little bit of the opacity and the reflection it's gonna be like uh, 0.7 and the side 1 so 8 yep and let's play it a bit with the the frenal if uh, sorry the normal map map size I think the roughness actually which is the value that we should play with yeah so as you can see we're starting to see some of the effect of these scratches i'm gonna just increase the intensity a little bit yeah so now we can see some of these scratches giving us like uh, a dirt effect on top of the glass this is just optional you don't need to apply this but take it as an inspiration for your future um, implementation of this process. Let's say, for example, you want to apply a witty effect uh, over the glass and showing a night effect, like uh, seeing the glass from the other side, or looking uh, at some water drops of the glass. All right. So the second material we're gonna do it for uh, through this video is the uh, steel material for this one so again create a material steel so I'm gonna go faster a little bit here Victor I'm gonna convert to a parameter connected to the base color let's put this cell cell and metallic let's put it as a okay let's put a scalar parameter instead at S and metal connect this to the metal and put it as 0.9 or something and for the roughness copy paste roughness I'm gonna put it like around 0.3 yeah and for the normal I'm gonna also bring that texture also Create a wood line texture and convert this to a texture object connected. Create a scalar parameter map size and sorry, push this to the back a little bit, flatten the normal map, scalar parameter, normal intensity connect it to the normal and hit apply so we also gonna create a material instance from this one enable all the parameters F11 to maximize sorry before that we have to assign the material to the steel uh, objects I guess this is enough for now we're gonna 
darken the steel color a little bit and now play with the map size also set 1.50 and increase the metal effect the roughness bring it back a little bit I guess we can add also the the scratches uh, material to the roughness like we did with the glass so I'm gonna put the scratches texture and one of the good thing about Unreal Engine uh, material that you can actually copy some of the nodes from another material let's see for this one we'll see and go for the steel material head paste and now we're gonna multiply this with the roughness hit M and connect XYZ and the roughness parameter and apply and this is actually one of the good things about Unreal you can copy and paste from one node to another from another from one material to another so um, it seems like the map size is out of a little bit of option let's put it to uh, maybe play a little bit with the middle I think the intensity maybe is the one who should we play with let's make it plus and one yep. almost there and minimize it Increase the size maybe to 200 or something. And the roughness a little bit. So if we look here, this is also uh, maybe the, the map needs to go down a little bit. And the scale is bringing down more. Yeah, and maybe the roughness a little bit. So if you, as you can see, if you decrease the num the effect of the roughness, you're getting perfect steel material. But this never happened actually in real life. Anyway, uh, let's save this. I'm gonna bring the camera to start seeing this from a cinematic point of view. Close up look here so our camera is over here and let's choose closer look sorry about that and click our focus point refraction amount need look like it's uh, needs to be adjusted a little bit for the glass so I'm gonna play with it a little bit, uh, play with the value. And yep, this is enough. Yeah. Maybe a little bit more. On the reflection side. Yeah, something like that. So basically uh, change focus point again and here uh, play a little bit with the value it's a little bit messy I know Okay, this is fair enough to see the material. So, if we don't want to see the glass effect, uh, sorry, the scratches over the glass, all you're gonna need to do is just apply the innocent material of the clean glass. And again, uh, play a little bit with the refraction side. Sorry. The furnel. 
perfect. And this one. Yeah. So here you have a, a clean look of the glass without any scratches. Get the camera. No, this is much better actually. Okay. So you can see some of the scratches on top of the metal effect and a clean look of the glass with some reflection uh, because of the planner reflection that we've added. Something that I forgot to mention, if you're planning to use the planner reflection, make sure that you have to go to the project setting and enable it because it's not going to be enabled by default. So you're going to hit this, uh, check this uh, selection for the uh, planner reflection and it will ask you to restart uh, the engine. So I believe with this uh, start with the material creation process we have learned some of the basics that will enable us to continue in our next video to create uh, more material for the landscape and for the walls of the building. So I hope this was useful for you and uh, see you in the next video. Thank you very much.